Hi writers, readers, and gamers. I'm Christy Stratus. Welcome back to American McGee's Alice. Sorry that I last missed last week, but I was on a writing spree. So this week w our topic is going to be cliches, and we're going to talk all about those because I have a lot of strong feelings. And we're going to, you know, just murder some cards. That's cool. All right. Ooh, his... That really popped. Okay, so cliches. Um, of course... Every writer is advised against using them, but so many writers do use them. Oh, did we return to this room? How interesting. We came from down there. Um, all right. Okay. Let's see where to go next. Um, so a lot of writers use cliches. Oh, we have to go there again? I don't want to go there. And we don't need to go there. Okay. As they use cliches as an easier way to describe things, not necessarily because, you know, the piece is just not exciting or anything like that. Of course, it's super exciting. It has nothing to do with how good the writing is, and that's something I definitely want to make clear. Um, but cliches are just a way to sort of express something in a way that everyone will understand, or at least that's my opinion of it. So, what I think is. Personally, like, I always try not to use cliches. What else can we use here? We'll use the Jabberwock. Oh, we have cards again. Okay. I always try not to use cliches. You know, of course, if you say something like needle in a haystack, everyone understands what you're saying instead of, you know, saying something like, um, you know, oh, it's really hard to find. It's a little bit more creative, even though it is a cliche that's been used like a million times. Still, um, it is more creative. But the whole idea, in my opinion, is to be as original as... Po oh, my God. Oh, great. Now I'm not going to get that back down. Well, that was just not good. Where are my dice? My dice! They've abandoned me. Dice! What number are you? Seven. Oi. Right, let's go back out here. Oh. <laughs> so by the time I actually did that, it was already going up. Oh, please stop yelling at me. I don't know why the dice are so difficult to work with. I don't know. Alright, you're dead. Nobody cares about you. We're trying to focus on cliches, you demon. Get away. Okay. I really think that, um, of course, they're more creative than just saying I'm trying to find something, needle in a haystack. It makes a lot more sense. Everybody understands it, and it is more creative. But uh, being more original is, of course, more exciting and makes your work more yours. So that's where I think it's really sort of important, at least in my opinion, to try to come up with other ways around cliches. So one of the ways that I do that, um, I really don't use cliches in my, uh, in my writing. I will say that in my draft, I might use lots and lots of cliches. All right, you know what? Cards, you're just not doing it for me today. Okay, let's go. So when you're writing the draft, be like super generous with yourself because it's a draft and drafts are hard and really you're just trying to get down what you're thinking so I would personally leave whatever you're gonna do like in your draft you know needle in a haystack say all the cliches you want to just so that you know what you were trying to say and then you can come back later and try to you know work that out but what I do to try and get rid of cliches in my own work is I try to look underneath the cliche like, what am I saying what is the context of what I'm saying and you know Normally, you're going to find, like, okay, so I'm writing in a Victorian era. Needle in a haystack, as descriptive and useful as that is, it has nothing to do with the Victorian era. It doesn't reflect, you know, my writing or the time period. And so I'm going to want to change that. And that's how I determine where am I going and what's happening? Oh, I'm going to take falling damage. It's going to be really embarrassing. Run away. I did not get falling damage. Okay. I think I have to just get to the other side. I think that's what I'm supposed to do. Oh, isn't that annoying? Don't you hate getting lost in video games? Isn't that just very irritating? Ugh. All right. <laughs> okay, it's so simple. It's right there. <laughs> just go right across. I'm looking for some complex, like, crazy way to get a... No, it's, it's so simple that it's difficult. Okay. Ugh. Silly girl. Ugh. Yeah, let me take your health. 
Oh, she's so hard to control. Get away. Okay. I don't know why she's so difficult. I really think it's just... I did remove a lot of stuff off of my computer, and it's still having this trouble. And I think I said in, a, in a, another video that, unfortunately, you know, this game does not work on my gaming computer. Something to do with Shockwave. I don't know. Okay, this must be when we're going into the observatory. Let's get the club out. See if we can do something cool with that. Yay, we found our way. Oh, miracle of miracles. Here we go. Onwards and upwards, finally. <laughs> I see you. Come here. Come here. Let me shock you. Um, so like I said, it's not really in the context of the piece. If I was writing something that had to do with, I don't know, the outdoors, maybe hay would be... A applicable but like I said like I look at those tiny details I really do I look at those itty bitty details and I really try to make everything suit what I'm you know, my time period and, and the genre and things like that so I'm gonna what I said before um, I'm gonna look at the context of what's going on around this as well and what the point is of what I'm trying to say and if, you know, um, trying to find something. Oh, I like this level a lot. If I'm trying, if I'm trying to say that this character is trying to find something, um, I'm going to find a different way to put it that fits into historical fiction, fits into the Victorian period, and also fits into exactly what I'm trying to express. You know, if somebody's looking in a jewelry shop for something that has, you know, that they're looking for a gift, you know, that happens in Anatomy of a Darkened Heart, we have a character that's that's looking for the perfect gift for another um, person. Unfortunately, it's not really that nice of a gift. It's kind of a backhanded slap, but um, she's looking around and I wouldn't say needle in a haystack because it's not going to see the time period and uh, you know I know it's picky but haystack has nothing to do with what we're talking about so I'm going to try and find a way to phrase that in some much better way and a lot of times what I do is I pick it apart and I say how much can I break the detail of this down and make this sort of more about the character and what she's trying to achieve than necessarily, you know, making it into this generalized statement, you know, and maybe I'm looking into the character's emotions, you know, it can be that, you know, into the character and into the story so that every sentence and every word really keeps the reader in the context of the piece and in the context of the situation, you know, go down from the time period to the character to what they're trying to accomplish. It's sort of like a, a downward triangle of what you're trying to achieve. And I know that sounds really complicated and like too much work maybe just to avoid a cliche. But for me, I mean, it's worth it. It really is to me because then I'm really just making it mine and making it a very original experience and making the book something super special. So that was my goal in writing Anatomy of a Darkened Heart and that's my goal in writing everything. So I actually did I did write something about this on my blog. Not I don't remember if it was specifically about clichés. I think it might have been. It was one of my Monday Thoughts on Creativity blog posts which I want to get back into and I really enjoy writing those in this one. Uh, I described how to, instead, I don't think I said cliche in that one, actually. I may have said something about trying to avoid common phrases, like, you know, he was frowning. And instead of putting frowning, maybe I can think of a thousand different ways to put that. And so I'm going to leave the link for that below, because it is tricky to think of on the spot. You know, I'm not going to sit here and try to think of something brilliant right now, because it's not that easy. It really does take some thought and consideration. Um, so I'm going to link that down below, and what I had come up with was a different way to say that someone was frowning that really reflected, I really love this level, that really reflected um, the situation, reflected parts of the character herself, um, so it's a little bit of development in there as well, and I thought that that was completely worth it, uh, like I said, I'll link that down below, you can see a little bit more clearly what I'm talking about. Now we are, okay, so this is telling us to watch out for these falling boulders. This is a tricky level. Um, I, it's very tricky to control her jumping. <laughs> for a second I looked at that and I thought that was a mud crab from Morrowind. Wow, okay. So this is not going to be an easy thing to do. Uh, let's take our jump. 
I don't remember exactly how it works, so I apologize if I die a couple of times. I will do my absolute best. But you know how it is. It's very hard. Especially with her crazy jumping. I think there are lobsters in this level? I don't know. It's a really cool level. Oh, there he is. Or he's an ant, not a lobster. <laughs> well, maybe he's a lobster ant. Um, I don't remember what the key to this is, so I'm just gonna... Oh, I'm just gonna die. Don't even worry about it. I'm not even gonna play the level. <laughs> Forget it. Yeah, playing the level is not important. We're talking about cliches. That's what's important, right? <laughs> wow. <laughs> uh, yeah, there is a way around this, and... I don't remember what it is. Um, one thing I am going to do just to save us all the misery of going back again and again and rewatching that scene is I'm just going to save right here. Save. So that we don't have to watch that over and over again. As I die millions and millions of times. Hopefully not. Or just right away. It's totally cool. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> Playing Alice is the background, right? Sure. So anyway, like I was saying, um, super important to me, not important to everyone about cliches. When I edit people's work, um, I might highlight cliches here and there, especially if they're said over and over. One thing I will warn you about is even if you're cool with using cliches, don't use the same one over and over and over and over and over and over again. You know, you're, you're writing a detective novel, somebody is looking for a needle in a haystack, you know, um, just a, a guy that looks a criminal that looks like everyone else but don't say it over and over maybe say it once and that's it and you know don't go on saying the same thing over and over so i'm gonna say that this is gonna roll right over me or or it's gonna murder me so i could be entirely wrong <laughs> maybe i should look this up because i'm sure this is not as a, or maybe it is super entertaining i don't know maybe you love watching me die um, it is entertaining in, in the interesting, morbid, ridiculous, laughing at someone who can't play at all kind of way. So maybe you like this. Um, but yeah, so either way, just be careful of cliches too. And be careful that you use the right cliche if you're going to use one. If you insist on using cliches, make sure that the cliche is not just, oh my god, like it doesn't even fit what's being said. And um, I'm in trouble here. Ah! I'm in trouble. Ugh. You know what? I'm going to have to look this up. I have no idea what I'm doing. I'm not ashamed to admit it. I have no clue what's going on. How about we try this one more time? I wonder if I'm supposed to run away from it. Hmm. Maybe I'll try running away from it. And then if that doesn't work, I'll just look it up online so I don't waste too much time. Well, actually, I've wasted a lot of time on this already, so anyway, so that we can come into it fresh, and uh, and I can just stop failing. Oh, uh, does it fall down there? Mm -hmm. Let's try running away from it in general. Or turn around. We'll see if it maybe doesn't make it over uh, some of these jumps. Let's see what happens if I run away. Let's just get out of here. Oh, maybe I go over here. Maybe I stay out of its way over here. Yay! Oh, I figured it out all by myself. Yay! I didn't have to look up instructions. And I almost died because that's what I'm good at, guys. This is... Hey, go up. All right. This is what I do best. Can I have, like, a channel where I say dies the most number of times and is excellent at dying over and over again? Do you think that that's, like, an attractive quality? Because I don't think so. Yeah, I've definitely seen people use cliches actually incorrectly. Oh, please. So I went through all that, and now I can't get up here. Sometimes it's just a struggle in general, you know? She's trying to grab on, but... First of, there we go, finally. She takes a minute to decide that she's interested in getting up. Oh, dear. Oh, my goodness. Can I just be a bum and save again so we don't have to do that like 10,000 times? Because I don't think you're going to watch me anymore <laughs> if I just keep doing that over and over again. I've seen people use cliches wrong even though they've been used their entire lives and they've seen them used a million times. Uh, 
Another one, you guys! So just be careful, is what I'm trying to say. Oh, shoot. Oh, oh my god. Okay, we learned the secret anyway. Just run away. Woo! It's a tough secret to learn. Because, you know, death. Oh, thank goodness. I really thought we were done for there. I was worried the river was going to just carry us away. Hey guys! What's going on up here? You, uh, you got a party going on? Oh my god, you guys tricked me so bad! You tricked me so bad, and it was entirely awful. Alright, well, let's just end it there, because now I... <laughs> I see what's coming. So thank you so much for joining me. My final message to you is if you can avoid cliches and make it extremely distinctive to your own book, your style, your character, the situation, everything like that, it's going to make your book that much more special. I think it's something that's really important to me. If it's not that important to you, just make sure that your cliches are not all over the place and make sure that you're using them correctly. So thank you so much for joining me as always. And I can't wait to see you next week.